Hello friends, uh, today we are going to uh, represent you anesthesia for bilateral uh, knee replacement surgery mm -hmm. and we are seeing that there is very much low joint space, uh, very much low joint space here, there is actually um, higher uh, joint space narrowing uh, that's why it is a osteoarthritis, in this case it is osteoarthritis and we are going to replace the knee for replace the knee and we are seeing another some another uh, x-ray for chest x-ray which is normal and the, the patient has already undergone bilateral hip surgery and uh, also it is also the cause of osteoarthritis uh, yes um, And our plan, our plan of anesthesia is uh, epidural and spinal epidural combined anesthesia. Uh, we first started with uh, spinal anesthesia and then uh, converted it to the epidural. We firstly uh, put our epidural catheter in the uh, epidural space, uh, probably the lumbar three or four segment. Uh, and then we go for a spinal anesthesia which will, which may um, cover uh, two and a half hour or three hour then we converted it into the epidural anesthesia or analgesia which is required or which is appropriate for the patient and uh, in these circumstances we are going to start our epidural process procedure this is preoperative or pre-anesthetic vitals for the patient and uh, that is quite comfortable for us okay okay now we are going to going to wash the patient's back for with the antiseptic solution first we give the wash of antiseptic wash of povidone iodine then we give the antiseptic wash of isopropyl alcohol okay we provide a very wide wash for decontamination Local. Okay, this is a wash of isopropyl alcohol. Now we drape the patient in the lower part of the patient. Now we are seeing the space of the spine for the for, for this particular patient. Yes, we find the space. Then we take uh, then we then we take the lidocaine two percent for numbness of the skin. Okay, we are going to give lidocaine two percent with the baby needle. It is actually one centimeter hypodermic needle, which are more commonly or popularly known as baby needle in our part of country. Yeah, we give the local anesthetic for the numbness of the patient. Okay, this is uh, this is Tuhi needle. This is Tuhi needle. It is uh, 18 G Tuhi needle, uh, which tip is blunt. Actually, we are seeing the tip here. Yes, this is the blunt tip. Okay, no, no, we are not getting our lo loss of resistance. Okay, we find out our <laughs> loss of resistance in this space. Uh, we are seeing that there is only three and a half centimeter of the needle is remaining outside of the patient body. That means uh, four and a half is inside the inside between the two spine of the patient. And we are pushing our catheter into the epidural space and it is entering into it okay we almost place the catheter about uh, 20 centimeter inside the epidural uh, space then we apply our push-pull technique and 
push out or pull out our epidural to his catheter. There is some blood gush out of the puncture site and we block it with our with compression with the gauze. Putting some pressure in the side of puncture. Okay, the blood is stopped. No, there is also some dripping out of the blood from the puncture site. We should have to compress it for some longer duration. Okay. Okay. Okay, we are putting our hub at the back of the catheter. Okay, hub is placed. And then we push a test dose of <coughs> adrenaline, local anesthetic. To see whether it is freely going inside the patient epidural space and yes it is going very easily there is no resistance feel during pushing the epidural injection and now we're seeing actually it's very difficult to understand is going yes yes it's going freely that means epidural this is the space this is one of the confirmatory tests for epidural catheter replacement, perfect replacement of the epidural catheter. Now we airlock our filter, which will be adjusted or connected at the hub of the <coughs> epidural catheter. And then we put a cap on the <coughs> filter and after performing the epidural catheter we will place 25g spinal needle for giving a spinal as our necessary technique is combined spinal epidural anesthesia Now we fix the catheter at the back of the patient with a tab pad which is available with the set, epidural set. Now we are taking 0.5% Buiva cane. And then Fanta, half a mil. Uh, total we give uh, 4.5 ml of uh, <coughs> uh, uh, subarachnoid space injection. Uh, it is due to this a uh, very long duration operation and we need a uh, dense block for a longer period of time. And uh, again we see the space for the subarachnoid injection. And this is our spinocale needle. Our consultant is uh, putting it in the space in between the two spine. Maybe it is L4 and L5. Yes, so we are seeing the gush of CSF coming outside of the hub. And we place our uh, injection at the hub of the spinal needle, spinocale needle and we are slowly injecting it inside the subarachnoid space. This intrathecal injection actually is very much important for this patient because it will, co uh, it will uh, block the both uh, limb, lower limb for a longer duration of time with a very dense block. It will cause the, it will cause the almost three to four hour of uh, dense blockade we including motor and sensory <laughs> it will also cause the uh, sudden drop of blood pressure and we have to keep in mind 
after placing the patient in supine position to prevent hypertension is uh, one of the important caution or activity for this patient hypertension is major complication for subcutaneous space block and we fix the space yes, we are placing our nibp here for continuously monitor the patient with an interval of three minutes yes we are sorry it is uh, interval of 2.5 minutes Okay, now we are seeing the patient pulse rate is increases uh, up to 144. The monitor has assigned the alarm of tachycardia. And uh, we are seeing what will be the blood pressure. No, we are not getting the blood pressure right now. We are pressing the button again for getting the blood pressure. Okay, we found out our uh, blood pressure is 119 by 16 with the mean pressure of 75 millimeter of mercury, but pass it rises to 150. So the heart is trying to balance the cardiac output and pressure uh, with increasing the heart rate, but we cannot uh, allow this heart rate for a longer period of time. So we are going to uh, push vasopressor within few seconds. We are going to give vasopressor ephedrine which also a uh, chronotropic drug we are giving it uh, 2 ml which is 10 milligram okay after uh, pushing the vasopressor <coughs> uh, we are achieving the heart rate of uh, 98 97 saturation 100% without oxygen and uh, uh, we had the blood pressure of 108 by 90 with a mean pressure of 95 and this is quite acceptable for us and maybe it may be uh, the bl blood pressure may be uh, dipped down to if there is uh, bleeding at the operation site uh, then we need to all uh, then we need to go for rapid volume resuscitation or may we may be use some vasopressor if needed but actually when there is a uh, blood pressure reduction or hypertension intraoperatively uh, due to uh, bleeding we actually causes the replacement of the fluid and uh, this is the technique we are using uh, for the anesthesia of the knee joint the combined spinal and epidural anesthesia and you have already understand what we are doing in the in our ot and uh, that's all my friends and thank you thank you everyone